music, color, and excitement. Who doesn't enjoy a football game? That is, if you're one of the lucky ones who can get in. If you're not, well, it's just too bad. But wait a minute, there may be another answer. Yes, thanks to television, that marvel of modern science, even our unfortunate friend and millions of other people can sit back in the comfort of their own homes and enjoy every thrill of the game with no struggle for tickets. Out of the stadium, the television cameramen are seeing to it that you can follow every detail of the game. They're out there on the sidelines, following every important piece of action. Cables connect the cameras with the mobile units which are parked outside the stadium. And from these trucks, the scenes covered by the cameras are relayed to the main television transmitter. Now let's see what a television studio looks like. It's a mighty busy place when a broadcast is being made from the studio. Great banks of light swivel down to flood the scene. Cameramen wheel in and out to pick up the action from the angles directed by the director. To keep the action continuous while the costumes are changed and while different sets are being readied, or to show an action which could not take place on a small stage, Portions of some broadcasts are made by projecting prepared motion picture film right into a television camera. Using the same actors and identical sets, the motion pictures are made in advance. The electrician, the cameraman, the studio manager, and the actors are all controlled by the director. His job is to see that the broadcast proceeds smoothly and without breaks because the picture on the television screen must be continuous. Camera one, move in close on the girl. Television and motion pictures are alike because in both, a series of still pictures is flashed rapidly before your eyes. So rapidly that the memory of each picture lingers long enough so that it blends with the next picture and the object of the picture appears to move. And now let's see what makes a picture a picture. Look closely at this one. The closer still. Let's use a magnifying glass. Here we see that the picture is really made up of thousands of tiny dots arranged very close together. But normally our eyes don't notice the dots, especially when the picture is being moved. This fact helps to make television and motion pictures possible. Television is simply a way of sending these dots from a transmitting station and putting them together to make a picture on the screen of a receiving set. Here's the way it works. Inside the television camera is a magic electric eye called the iconoscope, one of the most important parts of which is this sensitive plate called a mosaic. It is a rectangular piece of mica covered with billions of tiny photoelectric cells arranged something like this. The scenes being televised go through the camera lens and fall on the photoelectric cells. Some of the cells receive lots of light, others very little. Each cell, according to how much light it gets, builds up a corresponding electrical charge. These charges collectively make up an electrical image on the mosaic. These cells with their electrical charges are scanned by a stream of electrons. The scanning beam skips every other line and returns to scan the remainder of the picture, completing 30 pictures a second. Each picture is composed of 525 individual scanning lines. An electrical impulse is released each time this stream covers a group of the photoelectric cells. Each separate impulse travels from the sensitive plate of the iconoscope in sequence over wires to the transmitting station, where it is then sent out into space to be picked up by aerials connected to television receivers. Here the electrical impulses are carried to another magic tube called the kinescope and are used to control another stream of electrons which bombard the face of the kinescope, which is really the viewing screen. 
When the beam strikes this fluorescent screen, each electrical impulse is changed back into a spot of light. In other words, each spot of light picked up by the mosaic of tiny photoelectric cells in the television camera creates a corresponding spot of light on the receiving screen. It moves back and forth so rapidly, actually more than two and one half miles per second, that a complete still picture is formed almost immediately. The quick succession of 30 pictures a second produces the apparent motion. That is why the pictures we see on the screen of our television receiver seem to move. Television has come of age. Here, for instance, is a reproduction of one of the first images received on a television screen. Compare that crude picture with these of today, and you can judge for yourself how far along the road to perfection television has traveled. It is bringing entertainment to millions, and through its magic, we are able to enjoy a combination of radio, motion pictures, and the stage. Actually, some television patents were issued several years before the first automobile was built. But because of many technical difficulties that had to be overcome, its development was much slower. Just as the modern automobile is the result of years of research, scientific engineering, and testing by countless miles of actual use, Television is the result of endless experiments and new discoveries by patient scientists toiling in their laboratories. It has been developed just as the easy riding qualities of today's automobiles were developed by progress through constant improvement. Today we sit back in roomy, comfortably cushioned seats in steel bodies insulated against heat and cold and noise, surrounded by windows of crystal clear glass controlling the ventilation to our needs, riding smoothly over all kinds of roads in luxury undreamed of a few short years ago. Of course, television isn't yet ready to perform miracles like this, but who knows what the future holds? It's fun guessing, though.